I messed up on this. Cut. What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. If you've been here before, thanks for tuning in to yet another video. And if you're new here, please get down there and hit subscribe. And while you're down there, hit the little bell icon so you get notified every time I post a new video. I guess I got rusty using the vinyl machine. I think the placement of my letters were wrong. And so it only got like a quarter of the S. So basically it didn't get it. But I think I got it fixed. I put the S kind of where it's supposed to be. The thing about this transfer sheet is that it has lines. so. I tried lining up the lines right there so that it'll look good. Right here at the end though, I messed it up. So hopefully it lays on right. If not, we can just redo it, but I think I can make it work. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. All right guys, so there it is. So I don't know what the heck S's have against me today, but this is the one that didn't cut at first. This one did. This one decided it wanted to go rogue with the transfer paper. So I had to make sure the lines on that lined up so that this can be all good, but we got it done. So it looks good, been wanting to do this. So yeah, on to other things. So another thing I've been wanting to do is I've been wanting to put this reflective tape along the side of the trailer. I don't want to overdo it. So I think I'm going to put like four or six here, maybe a couple more here, probably two here. And I don't know if I need some here in the back or not. I'm going to measure it out. I might just do like one red, one silver. I don't know. Never mind. That's not going to look good. I don't know. I'll figure out the back, see if I actually do want to put some there or not. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that on real quick. All right, guys. So here we have it. So I did six on this side right here, four here, and two here. And then back here, I decided to do like that. So two on the left side, two on the right side. So it is kind of a lot, but it's not overboard. I know some people would have gone like around all the way. I don't want to say I'm not a fan of something that's for safety because I feel like I would sound dumb, but I didn't want to overdo it at the same time. I just think that it looks kind of tacky if it is too much, but I think this is enough. It's a good amount. If I had it my way, I don't think I would put some on, but again, I'm doing it for the safety because I am going to be hauling like my Subaru and stuff here and I don't want people possibly crashing into it. So the more visibility that the trailer gets, the better. So good on that. All right, guys. Well, as you can see, we've been getting snow for the last couple days or a few days I should say I've been wanting to do stuff to this car but as you can see it's covered in snow it's crazy because you guys already know what I'm talking about because YouTube can't keep a secret showing you guys thumbnails and previews and titles and all of that so spoiler alert we're putting an Infender coolant tank on the coupe so I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing cleaned off and then we'll bring it in right here and we will get working on it. All right, so that took a lot longer than expected. This thing was like, the snow was basically like frozen on there, so it's not like I could just brush it off. Like I had to put some elbow grease into it, but basically we are going from this to a hidden one that's gonna be in the fender and you'll only see like the filler neck over here. So we're gonna have two yellow caps right here basically and we're getting rid of this whole thing. So I have two of these, as you can see, the nicer one is obviously going in the blue one it's not nicer just because it's clean right now these like bolts that it has in the plastic are in way better shape than these so 
What we're going to do with this one, we're going to clean it up. We're going to put new nuts on these bolts, clean the threads on the bolts, and put some new hose clamps right here and just make everything look a lot better than it does right now. So I'm going to do that. And another thing I want to do is I want to make a little jumper harness on this car so that I don't have to press the clutch in to turn it on because it gets annoying especially since I have to jump this car all the time because I don't know anything about the history on this battery. I do want to take it out. I think I will. I'll take it out, put it on the charger, measure it, see how many volts it has, see if it's still good. I feel like it's not the battery though. I'm not sure because I put my jumper on it and it'll instantly start, but without it, it won't do anything. So who knows? We'll check it out, see what the heck is wrong with it. But what we're going to do right now is clean that washer tank, make the little jumper harness and then I mean, it got dark on this, so tomorrow we will be installing the Infender tank. So in order to make a jumper harness, you just need two female connectors. And basically you put one end here, you grab like a short piece of wire and then you loop it into another one and then you just plug it in. And I'll show you guys once I finish putting the second end on this, I'll show you guys where it goes plugged in. And then hopefully we should be able to start it without having to press in the clutch. All right, so we have our jumper harness ready to go. Now let's go install it. All right, so basically what you wanna do is you wanna come in here and on top of your clutch pedal, you'll see that there is this connector right here. And basically just jump the two ends and you should be good to go. All right, so basically this is what the end product looks like. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll down the window. All right, I'm gonna throw a jumper on this and then we'll see if it turns on. All right, so it's not in gear. Let's see if it'll turn on. I'm not even gonna get in the car. All right, so as you can see, that car is very loud, but our jumper harness worked. So that's really all you guys need to do is just connect one end to the other and make sure it's not in gear every time you start it and you don't even have to press the clutch and just go ahead and turn key. All right, sweet. All right, so now that that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and park it back in its place. I am gonna take the battery off. So it might just be a terminal issue because the terminals are both loose. Um, and I tried tightening them down, but it looks like they don't wanna get tightened down. So I'm gonna park it. I am gonna take the battery out anyways, go ahead and charge it and test it, make sure it's good. And then we'll be back tomorrow. We're gonna be cleaning the tank right now once I finish parking this. All right, so first things first, let's go ahead and clean these terminals real quick. All right, so let's go ahead and grab our multimeter and let's see how much it reads. All right, well, let's see if you guys can read that. So we're gonna go ahead and test it out. Uh oh. Okay, so we're reading about 1.7 to 1.8 volts. So that's not good. So I'm going to go ahead and throw it on the charger. See if we can hopefully bring it back to life. This thing should still work. <laughs> we'll see. So while that's charging, let's go ahead and get this tank cleaned up, put some new nuts on it, clean the threads, and put some new hose clamps on it as well. All right guys, so I got this thing as clean as I possibly can. As you can see, there's still some gunk inside, but it that stuff is caked on there. So I don't think it's coming off. I put dish soap in there, you know, mixed it up, took it out. I put degreaser in there, mixed it up, took it out. I even put a bunch of brake clean in there. That's what got the most of it off. 
And then other than that, I mean, it's staying on there, but it's pretty clean. Um, this bracket right here, I don't have one on the other one. So I think I'm going to take it off and I'm just going to replicate it as best as I can. And I'm putting the replica on this and then I'm putting this one on the other one because obviously everything nice goes on the blue car. So let's go ahead and remove these nuts. I got brand new nuts right there and I have some hose clamps that we will be throwing on this as well. Perfect match. Same size. All right guys, look how snazzy this thing looks now. Got brand new hardware, new hose clamps. This thing is looking nice. So I didn't put the bottom hose or the little rusty hose clamp that I had because I don't, well this, for one, this is cut. So I don't know how long I'm gonna need. I know I'm gonna have to buy some. So this is probably going in the trash. So we will figure that out tomorrow once we got everything mounted up and then We'll see how everything has to go, how much hose we need, where we're gonna route it, yada, yada, yada. What I do wanna do right now is check the, uh, check the battery and see if we gained any voltage. So let's go ahead and check it out right now. So we're gonna put power to power and ground, let's see. Ooh, I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me Let's see. Bam, so 12.3, all right. So I'm gonna let it charge a little bit more and then we'll see if it's good to go for tomorrow. All right guys, so today we have to get started on mounting this coolant tank. So like I said, this thing brought a bracket and the other one I have didn't. So I'm gonna use this one, which is original on the blue car and I made one for the coupe. So I whipped this one up yesterday and it's a perfect match, look at that. Don't get much better than that. So I'm gonna be using this one. The only thing I didn't feel like doing was welding a nut on it like the original one has. So I'm just gonna be sticking to just a regular bolt and nut. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw this battery back on the car, pull it in behind this Subaru, and then we will get started. All right guys, so I got everything taken apart so fast that the camera didn't even catch it. I'm kidding. I was working on this thing. All these bolts were rusty. I had to use turbo sockets on two of them. So I was over here cussing and talking to you guys and then I come to realize the camera wasn't even rolling so got it all taken apart now it's time to throw the tank on and see how everything is routed then we're gonna have to figure out how this hose right here goes so we shall see All right guys, well this mod turned out to be kind of a bolt-on deal, which is pretty sweet. I was able to get it in the provided holes in the fender wall right here. So I just bolted it up, bolted this up. 
the hose goes down in the hole provided right out here and then the hose this hose goes in through there now this coolant hose right here that goes from the radiator all the way here this was situated right here right so the hose went in there it's actually long enough if you just take it all out from there it's long enough to reach all the way here so it's pretty cool didn't have to do anything to it just put new hose clamps and we're good to go so now that that's done i gotta throw this fender back on but it's kind of smushed over here and i want to try out this new tool i got at eastwood the other day so i'm gonna see if i can bring it back out they opened up an eastwood store a little over an hour away from here so i made the trip out there last weekend so I got this little tool because I want to try to roll my fenders a little bit better on this car and I'll probably end up doing it on the coupe as well. So let's go ahead and try it out and see if we can get it to straighten back out. All right guys, so this thing is officially completely put back together. I did fix the issue with the door grabbing onto the fender. As you can see, now that it opens up, closes, no interference whatsoever. But man, I can't get over how cool and clear this area looks now. Like this is a big empty space and this right here is also a big empty space. So instead of having something bulgy here, something super bulgy here, we have these two little reservoirs right here. All you have to do is pop the lid on them, fill it up, I already did. And then pop the lid on this one, fill it up and we're good to go. So yeah guys, if any of you guys are looking to clear up some space in the engine bay, I highly recommend doing that. If you didn't see my washer bottle mod, I will post it right over here. Go check it out, it really does clean up your engine bay really nicely, and I'm not done there. Like, I still have to move a bunch of stuff, eliminate a bunch of stuff, so the engine bay is gonna look super clean on both of the cars but that's going to do it for this video guys i appreciate every single one of you for tuning in if you haven't already make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to the channel and while you're down there hit the little bell icon so you get notified every time i post a new video that's going to do it for this one so as always keep moving forward and stay on the gas